Hey y'all, I'm John Cates, and this is Post Glitch. This week in Post Glitch, Ghost in the Shell, Data Bodies, Nicholas Sasson. Number one, Ghost in the Shell. I was super excited to see Ghost in the Shell this week. I know what some of you may be thinking, but as y'all might know, I was super excited to see Ghost in the Shell. I was looking forward to this film, and I know that there are plenty of issues to address when it comes to the film. For the most part, I'm not going to address the whitewashing. It is obviously crucial to uh, decolonize the logic that was operative in the production of the film, but what I would like to focus on is a aspect that has not been discussed, um, which is actually a clear success uh, of the film, a clear achievement um, in which Ghost in the Shell, this Americanized uh, version of the classic cyberpunk uh, world and story uh, of Major, um, passes the Bechtel test. The Bechtel test is a test developed and designed, uh, defined by Alison Bechtel from 1985. In cinema studies, film theory, the Bechtel test creates a bar, a level of achievement that within patriarchy, unfortunately, is difficult to find. In order to pass the Bechtel test, a film must meet three requirements. Those three requirements are, number one, it has to have at least two women in it. Number two, those two women have to talk to each other. Number three, those two women have to talk to each other about something that is other than a man. As my friend Emily Mercedes Rich said, after watching the film, Ghost in the Shell quickly and aggressively passes the Bechtel test in a early scene between the major infamously played by Scarlett Johansson, and Dr. Ouellet, uh, played by Juliette Binoche. These two women have a conversation, and it is not about a man. But within the passing of the test, the concept of consent is very quickly established in the film, and that concept of uh, consent uh, between mm, the supremacy that controls uh, society, as well as directly controlling major, um, is always in a conflictual relationship um, defined by consent or lack of consent. Um, in fact, the film Ghost in the Shell resists having a love story for the majority of the run of the film. Spoilers. Um, and there are moments where relationships could resolve into a expected uh, heteronormative um, relationship, and they do not resolve in that manner. So that is a way in which the film quickly and aggressively passes, successfully passes the Bechtel test early on, and then maintains itself as a, in, from this perspective, feminist, or perhaps we might better say cyber feminist, given the fact that this is um, a cyberpunk, explicitly cyberpunk film, which is clearly attempting to successfully achieve a status as cyber feminist, as well as cyberpunk. Ghost in the Shell is also definitively Post glitch. The promotional materials uh, which led up to the release of Ghost in the Shell mobilized a myriad of post glitch and glitch aesthetic uh, approaches and techniques, um, including very beautiful moments of pixel sorting. In terms of post glitch, the first glitches that we see are when Major experiences memories of her human self. The glitches that we see in Ghost in the Shell are manifested in the form of human memories. So, spoilers, Major is haunted by herself, haunted by her humanness, and it is this humanness 
that is manifest as glitches using post-glitch um, glitch aesthetics that are directly derived from the fields and domains of glitch art. A glitch of a cat. This is a picture-perfect uh, moment for post-glitch as well as for the eponymous cats of glitch art because just as we have on the internet cats of Instagram, cats of Twitter, we certainly have cats of glitch art and glitch art of cats. Just as how cats can has cheeseburgers in all of their hilarity, glitch art can has cats. Glitch art can has lots of cats and cats can has glitch art. Cats absolutely can has glitches. Also, cats can has glitch art and glitch art can has cats. A familiar cat which comes from Major's memory of her human past which haunts her. Ghost in the Shell by manifesting glitches, glitch art aesthetics, glitch aesthetics, post-glitch approaches in the film as a cat is directly referencing the classic cyberpunk film from 1999, The Matrix, in which a glitch in The Matrix is manifested as a cat as a cat. This human memory as glitch is also a direct reference to the cyberpunk game Remember Me from 2013. Remember Me is a cyberpunk game, video game, which also features a strong female lead. She must and we as her in the course of playing the game we must uh, decode, recode, and overcome memory glitches in order to win the game. Being haunted by humanity and what it is that defines or limits the category of the human, this is a definitively cyberpunk preoccupation as we find expressed in all of these works, all of these cultural works of cyberpunk, also especially of course in the works of Philip K. Dick and as adapted for the screen in Blade Runner. Number two, in related news, on Tuesday, April 4th, 2017, some people in the United States of America became aware and mayhaps for the first times started to realize that they are made of data. People became aware of their data bodies on Tuesday, April 4th, 2017, on the event of their data bodies, our data bodies, all of our data bodies, as processed and translated and transmitted, transferred across the internet, now being sold or rather becoming more thoroughly legally available for sale. Number three, Nicholas Sassoon. And speaking of sales, here in Chicago, I picked up my online order in-store at Uniqlo of the freshly beautiful post-glitch designs by Nicholas Sassoon. Okay, let's break open this unboxing of a beautiful post-glitch by Nicholas Sassoon for Uniqlo. Artwork by Nicholas Sassoon for Uniqlo, made in China. Hmm. Yep. 
fits perfectly. Perfect post glitch fit. Uh, perfect post glitch apparel. Um, definitely gonna wear this. Wish I had had it um, in time to wear to Ghost in the Shell. Would have been a perfect uh, post glitch night. But to be honest, uh, the Ghost in the Shell screening that I went to was a perfect post glitch evening anyway with family and friends. Feels great. Looks great. Just like wearing a GIF. And from the Twitter stream, remember, computer security is a contradiction in terms. I'm John Cates, and this is Post Glitch.